All right, welcome to 6-5 on the road. We're at AWS reInvent 2024, and AWS had some amazing announcements, and we're going to talk about the ecosystem, the ISVs, the, this mystical ISV partner that AWS referenced from the keynote we have with us today. Click, Brendan and Sam, both data and analytics. You two lead two very important business units within Click. So I'm gonna start off the question as a AWS all-in fanboy. S3 tables. Mm. I no longer even need a database, let alone third-party services. What value is Click bringing in this ecosystem of ISV partners that Matt talked about from the stage? Yeah, it's a great question. I think the, the biggest thing for us is that this is just yet another technology. It's yet another avenue for you to store your data. There's tons of unique stuff that they're doing in terms of being able to do compaction and the like, but at the end of the day, you still need to be able to get your data out of those sources. You need to be able to transform it. You need to be able to look at the quality um, and being able to put all that stuff into S3 tables but you know, it could also be other things, right? Like you may have other purpose-built systems for AI, you might have other purpose-built systems for business operations. And so you still, at the end of the day, need to be able to bring data into those systems and have all the capabilities around it. So AWS surprisingly took 20 minutes to get into Gen AI on the keynote. Last year, it was Gen AI all the time, all the whole conference. This year, AWS did a, I think, masterful job, masterful job of weaving in Gen AI as part of the conversation, not just the conversation. Obviously, Click is all about data, <laughs> analytics, integrating that, but talk to me in the frame of kind of how AWS framed it. It's in support of getting business decisions via Gen, AI, what is the click story with Gen AI? Uh, look, I think as you realize what sort of happened with Gen AI, there was this massive hype last year. I mean, we all felt it. And businesses are starting to realize that it's a piece of the puzzle, right? It's not going to solve everything for you. So as we look at it at Click, we see generative AI as complementary in enhancing your ability to make decisions, right? You have the concept of structured data, which is like your financial sales data, things like that. And then bring in some of that unstructured data and you combine those things, you can make better decisions more effectively, more quickly that help you mitigate risk, make money and save money. That's really how we see it. It's augmenting it. So talk to me about some of the foundational concepts around <clears throat> your data when we're preparing it for Gen AI. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, you know, everybody has been able to go out and play with things like chat GPT, perplexity, um, and the like, and I think as, a, as an individual consumer, right, it's, these are super powerful tools, foundational models that have been trained on the open internet. And I think for, um, for enterprises who have their own data that's private, right, that's not accessible outside, it's like this is, this is one of the biggest opportunities for, to be able to take that data that they have in-house, which is their, you know, one of their biggest assets, mm -hmm. and then being able to pair that up not only with your operational data and your dashboards and everything that you're already doing today, but then to be able to add this other dimension and to have a conversation that will end up giving you the right answers. And I think um, as we've talked with our customers and we've talked with some of our early adopters, this is, um, this is it could also just be another target at the end of the day. If you have, um, you know, again, you're putting your, your data into things like cloud data warehouses, you have to do everything around your transformations. You have to monitor your data quality. You have to like you have to do a good job of managing that data as it goes into these systems. And you know we've been able to add generative AI. We've been able to add the vector databases, the embeddings as a target very quickly as a result of it. So to us, this is um, you know this is a this is an expansion of what we're already doing. But generative AI still needs high quality data. It still needs to be correct because if you have garbage in you know, it's going to, the, the LLMs and the, and the generative AI tools that you're using on the consumption side are going to get confused and give you the wrong answers. And if I can, if I can add to that, just I think there's an important piece there for any of those, any of your listeners that have 
played around with ChatGPT, asked the question, and got some really <laughs> wonky answer back. Like I've done it, you've done mm -hmm. it. Um, that just really drives it home. And our own generative AI solution, what we actually have, will actually give you an answer of I don't know, hmm. which is a which is perplexing to some people and say, well, wait a minute, your generative AI solution doesn't know. And we always say, okay, you could have a generative AI solution that just makes it up. Could be wrong, could be off of bad data. Confidently wrong. Confidently wrong as well. Yeah. You know what, and I think we, we kind of make AI, especially LLMs, experts in areas that they're not expert. We transfer this mm -hmm. authority to it that doesn't exist. As a subject matter expert, well, we're talking about data, analytics, IT infrastructure. If I go to somebody with confidence and say that you can run your web server on a Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. They're going to listen to me as ridiculous as that statement is, and it is important to have confidence in your data. So let's talk about that confidence level in your data. This is beyond Gen AI. This is about decision making. How do you, we know from the customer side if the data is really ready for decision making? Yeah. Well, I think um, I think this is this is not a new problem, right? Like no. the data quality has been a, a topic for years, and I think a lot of the same dimensions still apply, right? Like you've got completeness, you have timeliness of data, mm -hmm. you have data that needs to be updated. Um, you know, some customers have tried to solve that problem by keeping their data static and you know not changing, but then it gets out of date, right? It's mm -hmm. stale. Um, other customers who are trying to keep it continually updated without some sort of a measurement end up with you know, bad data or incomplete data going into that system that they have to go fix. And so having the intelligence on those data pipelines and those data products that, you know, at the end of the chain really helps you, I think, keep, um, you know, have confidence in it. Um, I think we've all been there where, you know, you're looking at a dashboard, you might be looking at a sales dashboard, a pipeline, mm -hmm. and you're looking at the dashboard and you say, this does not look right. Mm -hmm. Like this, like there's no way that this can be right. And frequently, you know, those those people who are really in tune with the data, like they're right, and they can go back and they can pinpoint some, you know, some problem. Um, and so I think I think it's a I think it's the same. You know, this is the same sort of problem that we've been dealing with. Um, one of the ways that that Click has that Click and Talent uh, Click Talent Cloud has been able to solve this problem is by having the trust score, right? So quantifying the quality of the data across different lenses. And we've then been able to translate that, you know, this historical trust score for data into an AI trust score. And so we've got a dashboard that allows you to measure, measure data, make sure that it's ready for AI, uh, along with all the other dimensions that have historically been um, important. So I'm listening, and one of the, I think, architecture alarm bells that rings off is when I can get a score from my data. I love the convenience of doing something like that. But the first thing that comes to mind is lock-in. All right, I've done this critical and very difficult process of cleaning up my data, preparing my data for AI and other data analytics. Mm -hmm. But if I put it in a format that I can't use it across my different systems, where's the value? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, this is, I think this is a trend that's repeated itself over time, right? You had originally, right, like all the data lived in Oracle, and then Hadoop and Hive and HBase and all the distributed data systems, right, like all the data got distributed. And then you had things like Snowflake and Databricks, then that sort of reconsolidated that data, other cloud data warehouses. And um, I think the trend that we're seeing now, specific to Iceberg and you know, some of the announcements that AWS has made mm -hmm. around S3, but even more generally, like other, you know, other players in the market, I think, I think what everyone is coming to the realization is, is that they need to compete higher up in the stack. Yep. And so by all of these vendors um, supporting things like Iceberg, open table formats, Parquet files, it's something that will reduce the friction in terms of the, the use of that data. It'll give users more choice. And one of the ways that we've leaned into that is in our, you know, in our pipeline product where you're building your data pipelines, you can actually store data in the same pipeline, you can store it and you can compute in different areas, right? You can use different vendors. And so we've really tried to lean into giving users choice um, because ultimately the users and the architecture and the references that they're trying to make there are, you know, it, like it should be them. And you know, being able to avoid that vendor lock-in and let the vendors compete on the basis of their own products is I think the best thing for everybody at the end of the day.
I think we'll be giving our audience a disservice if we didn't talk about the importance of data and analytics in that integrated experience. I hear the open format conversations, but there's a value play between an analytics platform and a data platform mm -hmm. within Click. Talk to me about that value play. And I think ultimately what it gets down to is we, uh, as we think about it at Click is, as Sam just described, you're going to have your data all over the place, right? But one of the things that we've always done extremely well is bringing data together in, in a single pane of glass, regardless of where it is and what source it's coming from. It's something that we've always been uh, been really strong with. We're going to continue to do that. We we also know that it's only going to expand, right? Where people have their data. Everyone would love to think that all their data is going into S3. That's just not reality. We all know that, right? We've got. We were discussing mainframes on the way up here, right? And so we at Click are always going to respect where that data is, but we are going to put technologies in place that are going to enable leaders and organizations to bring it together easily in one single location where they can actually make decisions off of it. And that's how we really see the world. So talk to me about real world examples of this data foundation. How are customers putting these solutions to practice within their organization? Yeah. Um, well, we've got we've got um, you know uh, Sherrod Kamara, who is one of our field CTOs, did a presentation at the beginning of the week. Uh, it was a joint presentation with Accenture, and you know they've talked about the the data product concept and um, effectively this reference architecture of you know bring, being able to bring together all of your different sources of data, being able to build the pipelines, being able to have the trust score, and then uh, having those curated data sets that are then being able to be provisioned for other parts of the business. And so we see some of our larger customers actually having things like product owner for data products, mm -hmm. roles where you know, they're actually taking requirements from the consumers, being able to quickly assemble those data sets and you know, having the confidence in them, uh, and then being able to provision those uh, into, the, into the user's hands. Um, not only for operational data, but also you know, being able to, mm -hmm. being able to put those things into a dashboard, right? You know, I think a couple really good example that I can think of is, a, is Mercedes, right? The automotive industry is really struggling, right? The supply chains got disrupted. Um, Mercedes uses uh, Clicks products to really get their supply chain data and it drives their manufacturing. Then they, they use the analytics and AI on top of all of that to understand where their gaps are and where they need to go. So Mercedes is probably one of those leading, leading companies that have done that. You also look at large organizations like Siemens, right? Some of the largest company, mm -hmm. one of the largest companies in the world where they have really put a trusted data foundation and they make decisions to, around healthcare and where they're going to put um, MRI machines and how they're going to deploy those MRI machines. Um, it's, so it's not just about, everyone loves to talk about customer churn and retail from an analytics perspective, but companies like Siemens are applying this data foundation combined with AI, combined with AI and analytics so that they can make decisions that are impacting people's health and livelihoods. It's, it's really incredible stories. So not that we haven't driven the point home. I think we need to put a fine point on this. Where does this go wrong? Like we've talked about using chat GTP and getting the wrong answer, but do you have an example of when people try to make business decisions off of bad data and the importance of engaging someone like Click to clean up the data, organize the data, and be able to make decisions off the data? So how long do we have? <laughs> uh, that's the question. Um, I would strongly recommend that anybody listen to this, just go to Google and just do AI fails. Just do it. It's it's very humorous, but it's also pretty sad. Um, so you look at a company. Uh, I will not name the name, obviously, but it's a company that did um, hiring, right? And they went down this path where they were trying to hire the right types of candidates with the right mix of background and the right mix of um, ethnicities and everything that goes with that. Um, their data foundation was bad, and they actually recommended not hiring a certain ethnicity, right? It went wrong because the data was wrong. Um, I can say this one because this one's pretty public, the Air Canada story, right? I mean, what happened with Air Canada, everyone has heard how that data that they had in their system made a recommendation to an agent that was just patently false and it cost this guy a lot of money and then it went out on the Twittersphere. So all of these stories where um, you hear about these organizations that have tried to put these AI agents in place and it just, it all started with the data. I mean, one of the largest companies in the world had one that was spewing racist tweets at people, right? I mean, you heard that story, right? That was awful. But that, again, that started with bad data 
that was just highlighted because of the way the model was trained. It just makes it exponentially worse as you get from the data into the way you make decisions. Uh, my own experience is writing my own bio, right, using ChatGP. It gave me a great job title. <laughs> Completely wrong, but um, those are the types of things that you keep finding, and I think at, if we thought it was challenging with structured data and trying to make sure the financial data is correct, sales data is correct, yeah. now we're in the wild, wild <laughs> west of unstructured data. Getting that right and really getting that data foundation right is going to be critical to every single decision that every CEO is going to make in the world. I really appreciate you two stopping by. This is an important conversation. Data plus analytics equals business decisions. I think it's an easy thing to write out, but this requires some detailed thought and, and partnerships to really get right. Every customer that I've talked to that's gone on an AI journey has been frozen at this data point, getting their data ready for analytics and then for the decision-making process. Stay tuned for more coverage from 6.5 on the road here at AWS reInvent. We'll continue to have this conversation around data, around workloads, helping you make better business decisions around your data and IT infrastructure. I'm your host, Keith Townsend.